Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mandy and this is my second film review. I'm trying something new, so if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, again, let me know and I will change it back to the original format. Um, but just trying different things right now. So, uh, so today I will be reviewing Todd Browning's 1931 adaptation of Dracula. And uh, this film stars Bela Lugosi as Dracula, David Manners as John Harker, Helen Chandler as Mina, Dwight Fry as Renfield, Edward Van Sloan as Van Helsing, Herbert Bunston as Dr. Seward, Francis Dade as Lucy. This film, as I said, was filmed in 1931, uh, directed by Tom Browning. Some of you may know him as being the director of a very controversial film called Freaks. Uh, I'm not going to spoil that one, I'll, I'll save that review for another time. But this film holds a special place in my heart for a very specific reason, and it relates to a certain other horror film that is very iconic, starring Anthony Hopkins. And if anyone has ever seen Silence of the Lambs, I would recommend you watch that film and then watch Dracula afterwards because you might recognize certain beats relating to acting traits that both Bela Lugosi and Anthony Hopkins display as their characters, which to me was a huge aha moment because it showed to me the reason why Dracula was so good was they both used certain camera movements and blocking and acting and the whole thing just comes together beautifully to create this menacing character in both films. So I don't know whether the director of Silence of the Lambs was inspired directly from Dracula or whether it's just a coincidence. I think it's a little more than a coincidence, personally, because there are far too many similarities between the films, and it happens within the first half hour of both films. These elements, for me, were just absolutely incredible. In the first half hour of both films, you get your setup of your location, so you know that the setup of Dracula is Transylvania and the Carpathian Mountains and Renfield is going to see Dracula. You learn this through the dialogue and through what he's doing. He comes across the villagers, the villagers tell him not to go to the castle because there is something or someone up there who is extremely dangerous and he must avoid going there at all costs. And um, now you compare that to Silence of the Lambs where Clarice, we know that she's an FBI agent from the fact that she's doing training from her location and we know that she's now being sent to, to meet with Hannibal Lecter for certain reasons but on her way there she's warned very clearly that she must be very careful with him because he's extremely dangerous the same way the villagers explain to Renfield that he should not really go to Dracula's castle because he's a monster and so there are similarities in those moments but then when it comes to the actual introduction the moment we get to see Dracula and the moment we get to see Hannibal Lecter it's almost exactly the same it happens at different moments in the film but the way it happens is almost identical and it's so eerie so when we first see Dracula he appears in a basement, completely isolated, center of frame, and he stares directly at the camera, which is us. And that it's exactly the same way Hannibal stares at us when Clarice goes to meet him. He is introduced in exactly the same manner. He's standing dead center in his cell. And although in Dracula, Bela Lugosi never says anything, his eyes do all the talking for us. And when he encounters Renfield, the way he plays with Renfield, it's exactly the same way that Hannibal plays with Clarice. And you can see both 
Clarice and Renfield are very unnerved, but I love things like that when it's almost like history repeating itself where two different directors come up with the same directing concept. I don't know whether you could say the director of Silence of the Lambs was inspired directly by Todd Browning's Dracula or not, but if he was, he couldn't have chosen a better film to be inspired by. And even the way Anthony Hopkins has his hair and the way he looks at the camera, it's exactly the same way as uh, Bella Lugosi looks at the camera in Dracula. And it's so creepy. And frankly, I'm, I'm not surprised that that film has, stand, has stood the test of time in terms of iconic vampire films, because Bella Lugosi being Hungarian as well, he didn't have a phony accent. His accent was completely natural. And the fact that he learnt his English phonetically when he came to America for the first time, he didn't speak any English. I have to say, for a man to do that, it's an incredible feat. And so he was an incredibly smart man. And for Dracula, I think he really did sort of embody the, the menace whilst playing him in a completely different way to the book. I personally love the book and I love the horror within the book and I like Francis Ford Coppola's version for being accurate but this film goes to show that you can actually deviate from the original source material and it can still work. I can't speak more highly of this film. The, some of the acting is a little wooden but the way it's directed, the way Bela Lugosi acts the role, I, I love it. The action scenes could be a little bit better it can be very slow at times, and I think it could do with just a bit more fast pace action in it, you know, some urgency in the end scenes. But apart from that, I really like it. It had a nice sort of modern twist to the designs of the clothing because it didn't quite feel modern, but it didn't quite feel Victorian. It was like a, a sort of a crossover point almost to not quite the 1930s, but not in the 1800s. So it had a good sort of mix in the costume department. I, I recommend checking out the Spanish version as well, just so you can compare. I personally don't care for the Spanish version as much because of the fact that I think the camera work and the acting is not as good. A lot of people say it's better, but I argue that it's actually worse because of the fact that it takes the menace and the stillness and the Spanish actor's cheesy grins kind of make it a bit laughable. I don't find him very menacing. I find him a bit over the top. So if you do get to see that, I suggest seeing it, but see it with, a, with an open mind that it's not really as good as the original American version. So that's my review of Dracula for today. I hope you like it. I hope you like this new format. Um, if you don't, let me know in the comments below and I will change it back. If you do like it, again, let me know. Please like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks. Goodbye.